So we are here because we want to uh, collect the earliest occurring brachiopods on the Palo continent of Baltica. And here we are at a uh, section called uh, Ole Klinter at, uh, at Øland, uh, where we have a section with uh, interfingering uh, uh, sandstones and shales. And we are in the topmost part of the, of the Cambrian period. So basically we will uh, try to see if we can collect brachiopods that are topmost Cambrian in age. And we will try to analyze these in the laboratory for uh, stable isotopes. Um, that's basically why we are at this section now. So what are we going to do in practice? Should we just take out, look for bracket parts, or should we just check out something and then put it in a bag and then look for it in Copenhagen, for instance? We can do that first. Yeah. If we have more time, we can continue looking for bracket parts. So we try to um, sample the bed. Here I have the bed numbers. Will we find adjacent levels where we can sort of like pick something out, collect a chunk, put it in a bag and label it with a number. And then if we have spare time, then we can start to look for brachiopods. But for now, we just sample the, sa the beds. So for instance, uh, one could start up there with the, that. You can sort of get it bed by bed, basically, with the middle interval. And then um, I think that's the fastest way. And we don't know if we're lucky. If, uh, and if we have more time, we can be looking for brachiopods. Exactly. We need to uh, sample approximately two, two and a half meters of limestone. And um, this is the interval basically going from here. This is because this is an important geological boundary. This is the lower ordovician, and from here and upwards is the upper, uh, the middle ordovician, sorry. This interval we already have uh, studied in detail. We have a published paper that came out earlier this year. Uh, from Russia, but that covers the interval. Now we are looking at this interval, the lower, lower two, two and a half meters here, through the lowermost ordovician. Uh, and in order to do this, we have uh, numbered uh, each uh, limestone bed so that we are able to uh, get a sort of a, uh, a, rough, a rough scale, though, trying to uh, collect fossils uh, through uh, the succession. Um, Unfortunately, we are under quite a lot of uh, time pressure here. We only have like an hour to do the collection, so we won't be able to actually look for the fossils now. We will have to do that back in the lab. Um, and we just hope that we will be lucky. So there are some quite large fossils uh, within this limestone. Uh, we've seen um, large cephalopods, I think you filmed that earlier. Uh, and here we have the tail of a so-called trilobite, maybe Stasbit trilobite. So this is basically the, the, the lower third of it. So the trilobite in itself will probably be something like this, about 10 centimeters long. But it's only the, the tail shield that is, is uh, present here. Trilobites are often found in just in parts of it. Basically, what we, we are looking for, for uh, what we call macro fossils. So that's fossils that are visible with the naked eye, but it may be difficult to see. But within the red and gray limestone here, there are some darker strokes, which are basically uh, shell fragments from, from trilobites. Potentially, we have a brachiopod here. It may be a trilobite, but, but this is the sort of thing that we're looking for, except that we need it to be brachiopods, because the brachiopods have a, a thicker shell that uh, will likely um, preserve uh, the original uh, composition of, uh, of seawater. That's not the case with trilobites, so uh, that's why we need a specific fossil group for this kind of, uh, of task. So now we have uh, collected all beds amazingly fast, 45 minutes, but it's been blind sampling, so we're not sure exactly what we have. We have found at least seven, eight beds where we have brachiopods, so we are sure that we will find something, but we don't know how much. But as we are in a hurry, we have just collected all the beds, and so now we try to go through it in detail, spotting all fossils that we can see, and then collecting the brachiopods 
There are examples if we look in the on the rock wall here, for instance, there's this white dot. These are remains of uh, of crinoids. It's a fossil group of of animals that were living on the seafloor. Here is a tail part or a mold of a tail part of a of a trilobite. Another trilobite is here. And so this is the topmost layer that we collect. Oh, up here actually we have a brachiopod. And so this is actually above the level, but I will collect this because it's, it's nice to have as a reference. It's very difficult to see. It's just the, the peak or the, the umbo, as it's called, of the, of the ventral valve that is pointing towards us. But uh, I'm pretty sure that once we get back in the lab, we will be able to excavate the rest of the, of the fossil. So this is one specimen that I will bring with me. It's not easy to see. It's very small. But actually, we are able to basically dig into the this, this shell. Uh, and when we, the shell is sort of composed of three layers. And when we reach the middle layer, that's when we take out pristine calcite. And that's what will be analyzed for, uh, for stable isotopes uh, in Copenhagen, which eventually will give us uh, some values that will tell us where we are in the stratigraphy and also um, a relative indication of how cold or warm these limestones were when they were deposited, or rather that how warm or cold the sea was when the limestone was deposited. That was a really, 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 really good effort today. One hour of uh, power working. Yeah.